KUEM News, winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. KUAM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938, Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus, Guam's leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUA News Primetime, an ongoing federal investigation into a deadly crane accident at the Port Authority of Guam has OSHA officials sending out a clear reminder for employers to keep safety top of mind. Plus, new developments in the Fed's investigation that alleges money laundering, tax evasion, and wire fraud in the CNMI, what court documents state into the case that involves a casino and lawmakers. And meet Baby New Year 2023, just three days old and being showered with gifts from the community as she's the first to be born in America in the new year. Hafa and good evening, I'm Nick Delgado. Welcome to Primetime. A $2.5 million demolition project of old cranes at the Port Authority of Guam was to be done safely. But was that the case? Now, nearly a year after GovGuam celebrated the project launch, a federal investigation into the death of a Guam shipyard worker heads into its second month. And the tragedy resulting in OSHA officials pushing out more safety reminders to employers. What caused a deadly crane accident at the Port Authority of Guam more than a month ago? Roger Forstner is the OSHA area director. At this point, it's an ongoing investigation, so we really can't talk about it um, until it's completed. OSHA is leading the investigation into the November 25th tragedy that claimed the life of a Guam shipyard employee. It's always, you know, it's a hard situation and you know, that's, that's why, you know, we like want to try and do, kind of get this message out. Last March, the port and the administration celebrated in front of the old cranes a $2.5 million project to safely demolish them. Guam Shipyard and Smith Bridge are the contractors making room for new cranes. Port General Manager Roy Respicio and Guam Shipyard President and CEO Matthew Pothin during the ceremony re-emphasized safety. The Port Users Group, headed by our Chairman Joe Cruz, has been very supportive of this project and even asked for safeguards to ensure that the Port will be protected during this project. We want to thank the Port Management for allowing us to move these things on the hotel mall for the past few years safely. Details into exactly what went wrong are part of OSHA's investigation. It comes down to, you know, a lot of times it's whether it's, you know, workplace training, you know, and it you know, safe and work control. The U.S. Department of Labor urging employers to enhance workplace safety measures as OSHA plans to inspect port construction sites and job sites where cranes are in use. Nobody goes into work today, you know, thinking somebody's going to, you know, die. But, you know, and the unfortunate reality is on average 12 people, you know, throughout the U.S. die every day, every day in, in workplace accidents. The troubling statistics and the latest death at Guam's port led to OSHA even putting together this list of safety recommendations. Being proactive, um, you know, when looking at things, you know, um, assessing risks, um, you know, really, you know, if a crane or, you know, equipment or any type of equipment is, has damage, you know, you know, don't, don't operate it, you know, be careful, you know, read the warnings, the cautions, um, you know, and, and don't, you know, prefer, perform any work under loads. At the end of the day, a lot of it is, is common sense. And it just, a lot of times, what, you know, when you look at things, people be, sometimes become complacent with things or, you know, they don't, you know, it's like they do things day in, day out. You don't think about it as much. So, you know, it's, it's important to, to kind of keep always in the forefront. OSHA is also expected to conduct outreach activities, on-site consultations, and more to prevent injuries and deaths in the workplace. Well, more than $300,000 seized from local bank accounts in the CNMI after the FBI and IRS's criminal investigations uncovered alleged money laundering, wire fraud, and tax evasion. As Tomas McGlodney reports, this all related to an exclusive gaming license for a casino that made big promises and lawmakers who apparently looked the other way. Well, I mean, if it comes, it comes. 
but I'm not going to not sleep over it and, and worry about it when I have work to be done. So. What do you mean when you say that? When it comes to no, I mean, you're asking me, am I worried? I mean, am I worried now? They raided my house. There's, they took it. Whatever thing that they think uh, they need it, it's going on three years. And in what's believed so to be the first I, of many legal know, actions stemming from the 2019 FBI raids on his home, brother's law firm, and Saipan offices of Imperial Pacific International, it is here, tracing back to an exclusive gaming license. U.S. attorneys for Guam and the CNMI filing a complaint for forfeiture in the U.S. District Court for the NMI after seizing more than $300,000 from two local bank accounts under the name MCS. The move coming after the FBI and IRS criminal investigation found a suspected conspiracy by foreign entities and entities and individuals in the NMI to commit wire fraud and money laundering, the schemes also involving tax evasion. The court filing does not fully name those involved, listing one resident of the NMI as AY, who is the sole owner of MCS. Also involved is the Chinese investment holding company registered in Bermuda with their headquarters in Hong Kong. That same company was constructing a CNMI resort and casino. Two CNMI residents and two local political figures were also involved. The U.S. attorneys say that the schemes began in 2013 when members of the company sponsored foreign trips to Hong Kong, Macau, and Singapore for CNMI lawmakers on a private jet. Not long after, the legislature passed a bill allowing for an exclusive gaming license. However, U.S. attorneys detailed that the company paid MCS and AY thousands per month even before the license was granted. AY continued to be a consultant, but the filing says MCS's actions exceeded the scope of legitimate lobbying or consulting. The company transferred more than $2 million to MCS and to AY through monthly checks, wire transfers, and reimbursements. AY and MCS also allegedly failed to disclose information to the Commonwealth Casino Commission on its exact business with the company in an effort to avoid fees. The third scheme found that the AY and MCS used funds by the company to contribute more than $46,000 to local political campaigns and political parties, including a $10,000 donation to a 2019 inaugural committee. Campaign statements failed to disclose some of those contributions, according to court documents. AY also made payments for overseas trips for CNMI government officials, where they golfed, ate, drank, and sang karaoke. As a result, court documents state that the company was given favorable treatment even when it failed to meet its construction deadlines and contractual obligations owed to the Commonwealth. U.S. attorneys say that the company does not have enough money to finish their project with no completion bond in place to mitigate the damage. Tomas Maglonia for KUAM News on Saipan. Well, the 19-year-old accused in a deadly stabbing in Mighty now facing murder charges in local court. A superseding indictment is handed down against Tano Reslap, charging him twice with murder and aggravated assault. He also faces special allegations for using a knife in the killing. Reslap appearing before Superior Court Magistrate Judge Benjamin, Benjamin Cezon today. But we'll have to wait until January 10th to answer to the charges after the court appointed him a new attorney. As we reported last March, Reslap got into a drunken argument with Ty Kenson when the stabbing occurred along Robot Street in Mighty. A man is arrested accused of allegedly sexually abusing an inmate whenever he was held at the Department of Corrections. 27-year-old Ruben Rivera is charged with first, second, third, and fourth degree criminal sexual conduct and drug possession. Court documents state Rivera was arrested Monday morning and caught with meth. Investigators then linked him to allegations that he, along with several prisoners, forced an inmate to perform sexual acts. Rivera also allegedly punched the inmate whenever he refused. Court documents state the incident occurred last February. Prison records show Rivera was being held then on family violence charges. Investigators are having trouble solving the armed robbery at Q Mart in Talafofo that unfolded a week ago. The incident sent one man to the hospital after he was shot by a masked man who took off with money from the store. Detectives have yet to locate the white Toyota pickup truck the gunman was last seen getting into when the robbery occurred. Authorities continue to ask the community for help in locating the man along with the driver of the getaway car. Now to an update on the story we brought you Friday. Family members wanting to know the whereabouts of 28-year-old Catherine Little and her 3-year-old girl Lillian. Family confirming that Little showed up to Lubbock Police Department with an unidentified man and they were considered to be 
found safe by police. As we reported, Little and her daughter were last seen here on Christmas Eve and arriving at the airport in Lubbock, Texas, Christmas Day. Family that KUAM spoke with were concerned that th there's for their safety and well-being due to the Little's mental state and her susceptibility to being easily convinced to do something. According to Casey Whitley, public information officer for Lubbock Police, Catherine and Lillian were located as part of a welfare check. They were never considered missing or endangered because no crime occurred. That is all we can release per Texas state law. However, family do not believe she is safe considering she hasn't reached out to any friends, adding because Little showed up to police department, they will not help family members by providing details as to where Little and her daughter were. The family will continue their search. We'll have more news in a moment. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art Matson vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Don't need to work, babe. Keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replay. And I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. Jack, the data shows that people love our more flavorful ultimate cheeseburgers. Show me the data. So the data's good. The data's real good. Well, actually, it's the best data I've ever had. My best selling ultimate cheeseburgers, now seasoned as they grill. What you need to know from the Northern Marianas. Follow KUAM CNMI on Instagram for the latest regional headlines. Well, the incoming 37th Guam Legislature is being called back to session Thursday by Temporary Presiding Officer Chief Justice Philip Carbolito. The new body went into recess Monday without selecting a speaker as the Democrat majority was split 6-3 to three between Joseph Augustine and Therese Terlahi. Nestor Lecanto has the latest on the battle for the gavel. I solemnly it's swear. rare, but not unprecedented, that the majority enters the new legislative term without selecting a speaker. After several weeks of caucus meetings, no Democrat has the eight votes needed. That leaves the door open for Republicans to leverage minority leader Frank Bloss Jr. And so, you know, recognizing that uh, they hadn't come up with the leadership, you know, it was, you know, uh, the Republican group. Uh, of senators, members of the, of the 37 Guam legislation that said, look, if, if we cannot, if they're not going to be able to discern or decide um, who their leader is be, um, amongst themselves, then we're going to uh, nominate, you know, one of us. The Democrats still have the numbers to decide amongst themselves, but if they can't break the current impasse, they'll need to reach across the aisle for decisive votes. I would say that within the last 48 hours, yes, uh, there have been very, very and, and the, the discussions have become uh, for lack of a better term, more aggressive uh, in, in trying to convince, uh, you know, uh, our group, again, as we've publicly stated, uh, we are going to vote as a block. When the people ask us, well, you know, uh, what do you want from them? It's, the question is, first off, what do they have to offer, you know, you know, in, in exchange for, for our votes? You know, there was a lot of overtures, but there was nothing committal in, in, in and being able to provide so that I can re report back to, 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 to the group. He says Republicans aren't seeking committee chairmanships nor any extra budget money. What we wanted was basically, yeah, increased membership in certain committees, 
um, the ability to be able to 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 work closely to to be able to move uh, other initiatives uh, you know within the confines and 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 the rules, okay, um, and and greater roles in the different committees. Bloss is not sure if a speaker will be seated on Thursday, but he hopes so. Unfortunately, a lot of the central staff they're on they're on, they're on eggshells. Uh, with regards to whether or not they're supposed to work. It's, we're finding difficult today to be able to turn in paperwork that's necessary for us to move forward because there's nobody at central office, okay? Uh, and, and people don't know who, you know, who's in, 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 in positions of leadership there. We can't continue to operate that. We've got to move forward. For KUAM News, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Well, the Government Corruption Division has been added to the Office of the Attorney General. New AG Douglas Moylan announcing the creation today, along with his deputies. Joseph Guthrie is tapped to be Chief Deputy and will lead the Civil Division and Consumer Protection Division. Heather Zona is Acting Chief Prosecutor and Sean Brown is Acting Assistant Chief Prosecutor. Both will lead General Crimes Division. Zona will also lead the Government Corruption Division. Raymond Logan, Acting Deputy, will lead Child Support Enforcement Division and Frank Matauta was appointed as Deputy of Administration. Following an inauguration held at the University of Guam late Monday, it's the first day of the new term for Governor Lulian Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenorio. A flag raising and swearing in ceremony of cabinet members held at Adaloop this morning to mark the start of the second Lou and Josh administration. These next four years are going to be just as challenging as the last four years. Governing is very difficult. Making decisions is very difficult. But I have been assured both in mind and spirit that my cabinet members, you, are going to again step up to the task so we can provide better services to our people, so we can continue giving the people a government that they can rely on. The inauguration festivities conclude Friday evening with the inauguration ball at the Dusitani Resort. New Year, New Education Board, the six individuals who stepped up to make Guam's education system better have all been sworn in, along with the new members of the island-wide Board of Governing Students. Daniel Paris has the story. As a member of the Guam Education Board. A new batch of Guam Education Board members are sworn in by Chief Justice Philip Carbolito at Guam DOE's HQ in Cizan. Most are returning members. Angel Sablon, Mayor's Council Executive Director, is the only newcomer. The Education Board getting right to work, selecting Dr. Mario Okada as chairperson and Maria Gutierrez to serve as the vice chair. Sablon, along with Peter Alexis Ada, shared their goals. I want to make a difference on the board and be able to do what I can, especially in the place of safety and uh, health of our uh, students as far as their facilities are concerned. I'm looking very seriously on two areas. One, uh, the needs of special education. That's a great emphasis for me. And the second one is the facilities within the Department of Education, uh, schools that need repair, and we want to do that as quickly as we can without disrupting the instructional hours. The island-wide Board of Governing Students were also sworn in today, each hailing from one of the island's public high schools. Daniel Perez, KUAM News. Well, a barely three-day-old girl is already hitting her first milestone. She's the first baby born in 2023, where America's Day begins. Our Mitsuki Hiriyama was there to capture the baby girl receiving generous presents from local businesses. It's truly a happy and prosperous new year for this lucky family. Eliana Grace Lahano is the first baby born this year on Guam and U.S. soil. The barely three days old newborn was born to parents Ma Elena Salas and Michelangelo Lahano early Sunday morning at Guam Memorial Hospital. So since it's my first um, pregnancy, I had a hard time because I don't know how to deliver the baby. But then after when I saw her, that's when I, I'm like... Um, I felt overwhelmed 
but I'm happy. But the four pounds bundle of joy, not the only surprise for these new parents. After her delivery, Sela's hearing from Dr. Thomas Shea that her daughter would be receiving a generous birthday present from local businesses. He said there's going to be a lot of people coming in the hospital, but I wasn't expecting that because I know there's a restriction. Yeah, but yeah, no idea it's going to happen. The unexpected blessing made possible through Archway Incorporated's annual I Love Guam New Year's Baby event. Now on their 19th year of welcoming the first New Year's baby, Vice President Mika Codwell thanks the local businesses for over $10,000 in donations. This is a community effort and I know that you guys have been donating almost since the beginning, maybe since the beginning, um, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger every year. So you know, thank you all and congratulations. I really hope you can fit all this in your house. <laughs> The family speechless to be receiving a table full of gifts, including a two-year supply of diapers, a baby stroller and car seat, various gift certificates, free fuel, and much more to get them started on their new journey. It's a lot of uh, blessings. Yes. Uh, we thank um, all the um, donors. Um, we can't thank them enough. I'm like speechless when I heard about this. Yeah, but I'm really thankful. Congratulations and happy birthday to baby Eliana Grace. Congratulations to them all there. Now for a look at your world at home. Here's a view captured from Tumon Bay of the fireworks display bringing in the New Year Island style. The Guam National Weather Service predicting Wednesday will bring more soggy weather our way. A 40% chance of scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. I won't Adventures. How about a new Jeep to go along with it? It is the Start Something New sales event happening now at Cars Plus. Experience a new level of freedom and adventure in the new Jeep Gladiator. Or how about the all new legendary Jeep Grand Cherokee L? The most awarded SUV ever now features a fresh interior design and three rows of seating. Call us at 671 477 7807 or visit our website at carsplusguam.com to get pre approved online today. Hey, you want to order some Taco Bell? Two grilled chicken burritos, two bold flavors. Order on the app, only at Taco Bell. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. The new year continues to roll on, everybody. We are three days in. I'm Jason Salas. Welcome to KUAM Sports and Fast Pitch Softball a Clinic, a proper forum for learning the right mechanics, the right attitude, physically and mentally, is going on this weekend. And we were welcome to the show. Uh, Miss Katie Hart, and she is one of the instructors at this very, very worthwhile opportunity that I want all you female athletes to really consider. So Katie, Happy New Year and welcome to the show. Happy New Year. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about uh, fast pitch softball uh, for the young ladies. Um, is there any difference between fast pitch softball and, you know, the more maybe uh, the softball that, that we all played in, you know, phys ed class? Yes. <laughs> so fast pitch softball learning, uh, the pitching for one uh, comes in at a much faster speeds. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, you know, you do have the basic skill sets. So uh, it's more of a pitching uh, standpoint would be the difference in the fast pitch and the slow pitch softball. So mechanics are probably the most important thing, especially when learning, but also through your entire career of playing because 
you want to make sure you're doing it properly so that you do not have injuries along with it. So um, people who there's different types of pitchers, some of them are like fireball pitchers. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is that people catch on to your speed. And once they do... So just like in baseball, you have different types of pitches and movement pitches is really the most important because you're moving it on the plate, hitting so you those still spots. you do have your cutters, your sliders, your change -ups. Absolutely. Okay. You have inside, outside with most of those pitches also. So you have to learn how to place that ball all around the plate or else it's being thrown right down the middle. That's when you're going to have it hit out of the park, you mm -hmm. know, so... Yes, it is. And the very sluggers important. pick up on your tendencies, and then you, your ERA is like through the roof. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, for this clinic in particular, we are looking for eighth graders, upcoming ninth graders. Mm through high school age girls. Um, and then we hope in the future to offer some younger age groups also. But this one in particular, it's right before the high school season. Um, so we thought it'd be a great way to kick start uh, a start for them before their season starts and getting out there, getting active and working on those skills. We will be doing fielding, infielding and outfielding and doing drills, um, teaching them things that they can do and then we will also be working on batting this is absolutely free this is being funded through um, guam amateur baseball program and the girls will be having a completely free clinic we will have um power aid provided for them we will actually have a pizza party lunch after the clinic so it's also about bonding you know the girls all across the islands um all about this game of softball you know we want them to have fun but also really learn um while they're out there our phone numbers are listed. We also have a Facebook page that they can contact us on. Um, there is an event set up through the Facebook page and it will have all the updates or if people have questions, they can ask Guam Amateur Baseball and then there will be an event set up through Pony Softball. It is this Saturday and check-in starts at 8 a.m. And then we will go through lunchtime. And for those kids interested in learning to pitch and catch, we will um, start back up after lunch, 1.30 to 3.30. All right. Well, best of luck to you. And we, we look forward to you um, training uh, young female athletes to play the game and develop a love for the game the right way. So thank you for that. That's right. Thank you so much. All right, Katie. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. This burger looked at one slice of melted cheese and said, more cheese. It looked at pickles and said, also onions. It wanted to be more than hot. It wanted to be juicy. This is the Quarter Pounder with cheese. If you thought one napkin for the quarter pounder with cheese was enough, it's not enough. Finally tonight, your Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club shout out submitted on KUEM.com. Happy birthday on January 3rd to Leanna Santos. Happy birthday, Leanna. Your entire island community, the entire island family is wishing you the best birthday ever. And we got some belated birthdays to get to. Zane Jacob Sablon, happy birthday, lucky number seven to this amazing KUAM kid. Wishing you a special day that's as amazing as you are. Happy New Year to our very own New Year's Day birthday boy. I remember when Zane was born. I did this story over there at GMH. Love always, mommy, daddy, and sissy. Jax Aliyah Chaco, happy birthday number six. We love you, says your family, born on December 31st. Nolan Rymandula, also born on the last day of December. Happy birthday and may your day be filled with nothing but smiles. Love your family near and far. Happy second birthday to Princess, known to you and me as Bailey Kanata. All the love in the world from Mommy. And Larry Dimla, happy birthday number 86 to Daddy and Lolo and many more birthday blessings to come. Love says a very proud and endearing family.
And that's your primetime show. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nick Delgado. Stay safe and good night. KUAM News. Quick points. Do more, get more. And Calvo Enterprises Inc. <laughs>Mike wasn't hot for that that one about two seconds ago all right everybody first hot spot of the new year happy 2023 to you and to commemorate the event I'm going to read a wonderful lead that was written all right here we go good morning and welcome to the lit the hot spot where we bring you the most pressing and timely issues affecting our island community every day at 11 a.m. we go live on YouTube and Facebook discussing the stories that matter most to the people of Guam. From politics to public health, no topic is off limits as we work to keep you informed and engaged. So stay with us as we delve into the heart of what's happening on Guam right here on the hot spot. That is a wonderfully written statement and none of us here did it. That was all artificial intelligence. No kidding. So our machine overlords are taking over. Thus, let's begin the show. The Menu, brought to you by King's Restaurant, always open, always local, and Ruby Tuesday Guam, home of the fresh Garden Bar. And now that we're 90 seconds into the show, we want to tell you that Claire Calvo is stopping by, and she'll have this week's episode of Weekly Renewal. We're also going to take a look at the work week weather forecast, what is going up in the skies, and house to home with Gina Campos. Liz is traveling, but we're going to talk about her predictions for the year 2023. All right, and right off the bat, everybody, we want to tell you the very sad news for Guam's Catholic community, the Catholics all over the world for that matter, as the Vatican is estimating 65,000 people followed past the body of the late Pope Benedict on Monday as he lies in state. He passed away at the age of 95. Here's more. People hoping to say a final goodbye to Pope Benedict XVI poured into St. Peter's Square throughout the day, waiting for the chance to walk past his body lying in state. He was a great pope. He was a marvelous pope. Before the crowds arrived, Benedict's closest aides prayed over him in a monastery at the Vatican. Some touched his hands wrapped in rosary beads. A silent procession in the still dark morning hours took the Pope Emeritus to St. Peter's Basilica. The Basilica's archpriest blessed his body with holy water and incense before the doors opened to the public. Pope Benedict will lie in state for two more days before his funeral here at the Vatican. On Monday, the Vatican has confirmed he will be buried alongside other popes in the grotto beneath the basilica. Benedict became pope in 2005 and was known for his strict interpretation of Catholic Church doctrine. Despite his failures, he was the first pope to meet with victims of sex abuse and to publicly apologize. He was also the first pope to resign in six centuries, recognizing, he said, his incapacity to fulfill his ministry due to the strain of old age. Pope Francis championed Benedict's bravery to abdicate his power. He will preside over the funeral of his predecessor on Thursday. Chris Lipsey, CBS News, Rome. And now here's Weekly Renewal with Claire. Weekly Renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. a new year ahead of us so this is a clean slate every day I get to begin again and there are various tools in the coaching on on goal setting and achieving those goals and especially with New Year's uh, when you're talking about resolutions very often we're pushed through willpower and discipline am I under the influence of you can say I want to be rich that energy depleted right. not a match vibration. Is what am I gonna do to feel healthy and 
wanting relationship. Always knowing what am I, how am I energy? Self talk. Um, so, more about feeling than thinking. Right. More about energy. At first, I know in yoga, from that space when you're, you're using, there's different brain waves going on, so it sinks in even deeper, and you're 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 in a higher frequency to really affirm those intentions yeah. for the new year. So, first, we'll do a, a life review and to really build the momentum of all the things that I've accomplished. Go through your life, do a life review. What are the things that I set my mind to do when I did it? And more. Oh, if I did it. And it's like, what are those, what are those moments? If I want to be a love relationship, what are those times where I felt loved and I loved myself? Or, or in really just um, picking what the of all the highlights of my life where I felt proud. proud to do it and I did it. All the times that uh, all the people that I love and the things that I care about, where I felt in, I was in my element. Mm -hmm. I was doing something that I really enjoyed. So you're building the momentum of the energy and also looking at your life as a demonstration that if I did it then, I can do it now. And that's just on how much more we got to go and how much we did get done that we sometimes fail to give ourselves a pat on the back. And it's not just to stop and review. I did come a long way, although I may have a lot more to go, I've come a long way. Very, very true. And so that's the thing. You set all the intentions. Do you feel say I am deserving of it? To really feel worthy, um, to feel valuable enough to say yes to that, to, to manifesting that in your life. So one of the basic formulas, so that was life review is one. Second, the basic formula of coaching is the RT, make it specific. And it might be uh, make it specific, um, measurable, so you can know the increments. If I wanted to drop, I wouldn't say lose, because then if you lose something, you'll find it. You don't want to find that back again. So if I want to drop 10 pounds, um, that's specific, measurable. I can measure it through a scale. Uh, attainable, yes, it can be attainable if I wanted 10 pounds. That's doable for me. Uh, 100 pounds, no, you know. Realistic, it's realistic for me to do it within, oh, let's say I used to work at a weight loss clinic. So two pounds a week is doable. One and a half to two pounds a week is doable, depending on what your, your weight. So that would be realistic. And then T for time bound. You need to set up those timelines of by this day and really affirm it by have a, have a day the dress or want a big event, then there's a timeline of shopping that way. So again, that's a basic formula, smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. And then you would jot that down and track like anything else. Thank you all. Weekly Renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. Real quick, we are going to give you now news bites. I've been petitioning to call this news nibbles, but we're going to stick to bites, at least for the first week of the year. Amphibious Guam has announced the opening of registration for pre-amphibious junior amphibious training programs to be held around April. Parents or guardians of beginner, intermediate, and advanced swimmers ages 5 to 13 are encouraged to register online. They can email amphibious.guam at gmail com to participate. Sheila Compton Revo, the Director of Manpower, Personnel and Human Resources for the National Guard was promoted to Colonel. There of course on her her left, your right, Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio and of course the one and only Major General Esther Agigi for the Guam Guard on who put the full bird Colonel rank on Sheila's shoulders. Congratulations Colonel, well done. A student from Guam who's enrolled in the Hawaii Job Corps program is making an impression as an outstanding apprentice. Yurule Niraimut was given an all expenses paid trip to Washington, representing the island. Good job to her. And Tano Joseph Tainatango was selected among his peers to be promoted to E4. He's now a specialist in the Army. 
He's stationed at Camp Humphreys Military Base in South Korea. He's from the South on Guam, and he has traveled the world, and he was fortunate to enlist under the watch of his mother. Congratulations to all of you. All right, stay tuned. Weather is up next. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. There's nothing better than my two for six dollar sausage biscuits in the morning, or afternoon, or at dinner time, or around midnight, or yeah, you get the picture. Try my two for six dollar sausage biscuits anytime you like. KUAM News, winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. Welcome back to the hot spot, everybody. You know what's changed? Our calendars, the kinds that, you know, like you get, the ones you actually physically open and you hang up on your desk or you put on your table, those change. They also change digitally, so if you have them on your computer. But you know what hasn't changed? Mother Nature. She is still in control of everything that's happening up in the skies. And who better to break down exactly what she has in store for us in a new year than a good buddy, Landon Adlett, who joins us for the first work week weather forecast of the year 2023. Let's bring in Landon right now in the KUM News Zoom room. There he is. Good morning. And Happy New Year. How's everyone doing? Uh, well, we're doing fantastic. We're up where I stay in Dedido. It was uh, rather loud on New Year's Eve, let's just say. Um, you know, apparently <laughs> apparently the King Car and uh, Mr. Brown corporations are doing very, very well in the uh, canon. Market, but, you know, that's a completely different interview. But uh, how was your New Year's? Yeah, it was also noisy on my side as well, but it was a very late night bringing in the uh, the New Year with the festivities. Lots of food and friends, and that's what it's all about here on the islands. And uh, celebrating it with those who are close to you and try not to overeat. But that's all behind us, and the new year is blowing in rapidly. And so we're going to go right to the weather. Uh, fortunately, it's been a, a pretty tumultuous start of the year, especially the end of 2022 with a lot of wind and light showers, but nothing significant as far as severe weather. That is our current visible satellite imagery of what's out there. And if you've been outside in the last couple hours, you know it's it's just not a good day if you want to be up on your rooftop painting your house. And that's what my only goal has been for the last two weeks. I've been on vacation and I'm still on vacation a few more days. And my only goal and plan is to paint my roof. And you cannot do that in these conditions. We have these clouds just uh, sucked in over the Guam and the CNMI this morning. This is part of that persistent shear line that just won't leave us alone. So we are in the dry and windy season but it doesn't feel dry out there. We just have these light nuisance showers and they just keep coming mm. over us from time to time. I'm going to flip through screens right quick and go to the radar at the moment. This is what we're looking at the Doppler weather radar. Just these showers, they just come through, they blow through, get everything wet. It might drop about a 10th or a quarter of an inch of rainfall in about 10 to 15 minutes. And then it moves on through, things dry out, and then it's another shower that just comes blowing through here. And of course they bring wind gusts upwards of 20 uh, 20 to 25 mile per hour. And so that's what we're going to be looking at, at least through the remainder of today. The showers are going to gradually build in a little bit more from the east, uh, moving westward. And that's going to be a theme through today and the next couple of days. I'm going to go back to the, the satellite right quick, uh, just to show the cloud top temperatures. These are the, the colorized infrared. Um, there is an isolated chance of thunderstorms uh, through tonight at least. Uh, we're not going to see the widespread lightning and thunder and stuff. It's going to be more of a, a one-hit wonder. You have a, enough convection to build up vertically high enough into the atmosphere. You get one or two bolts of lightning, and then it quickly dies down. We had one of those uh, well east of us, about maybe 80 to 90 miles east of Guam. We're going to see that with the heavier showers over the next 12 to 18 hours. Otherwise, not a washout, but again, these showers could come in uh, a brief downpour and then they move right on out. And this is the, the theme with these shear line type features that just really blow out across the area. And this is a theme uh, largely across the region. We have that cold front coming way down from our northeast, uh, northwest of Hawaii, then it cuts right across the area. And the shear line 
cuts right across Guam and the CNMI and then goes on toward the Philippines where there might be a weak circulation near Palau, no threat to us, of course. Much wetter pattern across Micronesia with the ITCZ, kind of a tropical wave near the dateline. Then I'll be pushing westward. We'll be watching that for any kind of uh, uh, inclement weather that may be coming to the Micronesia, the Marshall Islands in the coming uh, several days. But overall trends, we're going to be a little bit wetter than normal across the Marianas. And that's with this persistent shear line, about an inch of rainfall expected now through uh, next Monday, and then about three and a half inches rainfall over the next 10 days. But otherwise, not too bad. We do have a couple of advisories in effect. The beach hazard statement for Indo-Pacific man of war still washing up on our beaches. So oh, no. this is generated off of, of reports. So if you are at the beach and you see these on the beaches, please let us know because this is a event report driven product. Beach hazard statement for Indo-Pacific man of war washing up on the beaches. There are primarily on the windward facing beaches but not limited to those beaches so keep that in mind if you see them don't step on them stay away from them because the tentacles can be very long and stretch out in the and, water and we, on the Lennon, real quick we talked about this last week because when you say like the windward side of guam i mean you know all, all my friends in oahu they say are, are you on the windward side or the leeward side out here we don't use those terms uh as often so but basically like if you're saying the portuguese man of war very very common to like just pirates cove down in epan so that would be the windward side of the island right <laughs> That's exactly it. Uh, Jeff's Eat Pirates that. Cove down Ipan, Ipan Beach, First Beach, uh, Marble Cave, Pagot, uh, Pago Bay, Talapopo Bay. But then also we're so, getting Oh, they reports. do show up in Talapopo Bay. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's correct. And we're also getting some reports up at Taragi Beach, up at Anderson, then also around Gratidia Beach because you get the strong wraparound currents and swell up there as well. Uh, high risk of rip currents through Wednesday afternoon along east-facing reefs. Those are also those same beaches from Jefferson Pirates Cove all the way down to Inaraha and then northward up to Anderson uh, and then probably Retidian. So watch out for strong currents at Retidian. The winds will be elevated in the coming days with that, that shear line still remaining in our neighborhood, pumping those strong northeast winds the next several days. Uh, a small craft advisory remains in effect for the coastal waters of the Marianas the next several days. So the winds and seas and surf will remain uh, hazardous uh, at least through the bulk of the week. So watch out for that. If you're going to be outside but again not so bad um but if you're going to be painting your roof it's not a good day or a week for that it looks like and okay so I'm um, out of luck. looking at from this from this from a historical perspective is this expected to be a drier january than we normally see or or even wetter uh we're going to be a little bit wetter than normal and that's typical with these la nina patterns our dry season tends to be a little bit wetter and so we're part uh, we're more or less in the wet part of the dry season. So we have a lot more showers, but these showers individually are not dropping a lot of rainfall each session. Uh, it's more of a, a light, drizzly, nuisance rainfall, gets things wet, and then it moves on through. So you think about back in September, October, and November in the wet season, you get a bit a 10 or 15-minute shower, and it drops about a half inch of rainfall. Gotcha. You get a 10 or 15-minute uh, rainfall here. It's about a tenth of an inch or less, uh, just enough to get things wet. But La Niñas typically make our dry season a little bit wetter, a little bit windier, and then we'll be in the heart of the, the dry part of the dry season come February, March, and April. Well, as, as you were detailing again your home projects, I mean, we wish you and your family, your twin brother, uh, Brandon, and his family, uh, beautiful, beautiful family, uh, the very best heading into the new year. And we appreciate you saying that, you know, you've got some household projects going on because, you know, you say it's been less than ideal conditions for you to paint. Uh, I've been actually looking for, you know, those oscillating devices so I can cool down my house. So like my only goal is to get only fans. Yes. Only. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Yeah. I uh, will we'll, say, we'll, we'll see if, we'll see if we can make it work. Cause it has been rather, rather hot lately, but Landon, man, we appreciate it. And happy new year to you and the crew over there at the NWS. And thank you to my friend in Kentucky for the awesome Ooh. gift maple syrup and coffee. You can never go wrong with coffee for us long hours and shift workers here. <laughs> coffee is good and coffee is good for you. So hey, sharing is caring, yes. man. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get together one of these days and we'll, we'll, we'll open up a bag. Absolutely. I'll have well, you I, over sometime. True to form, everybody. La Landon Aylett and his crew over at the NWS always grinding. Always grinding. Bringing you the weather and in coffee beans. <laughs> we, got, we got all sorts of crazy wordplay on today's show. All right, stay tuned. How's the home effect?
Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. How deep do Pizza Hut's roots run in the islands? Through all the decades, we know what you love. Great taste at an even better price. Like our large three-topping carryout pizza for just $13.99. You choose your favorite toppings, meat, vegetables, or any combination that totals three. Our $13.99 large three-topping pizza. Order online and carry one out today. Only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. Properties in the Tropics is your weekly roundup of the hottest properties on Guam. Every Thursday, get a virtual walkthrough of homes, apartments, townhomes, and land available for lease, rent, or sale. With a breakdown of the most important info, including costs, features, and of course, location details. Watch it on KO News Hotspot at 11 a.m. on streaming and TV8 or catch the Encore at 5 p.m. on TV11. You can also check out each installment on Instagram too. Properties in the Tropics is presented by Remax Diamond Realty. Subscribe to our KOM News Digest, our weekly email newsletter with all kinds of information straight to your inbox. Just subscribe and we'll make sure to keep you informed and entertained with news from the KOM News team, what to watch on NBC and CBS, and the latest promotions from KOM Communications. Go to KOM.com, click on the newsletter tab at the top of the homepage, register, and you're all set. Brought to you by Uno Go, Guam On Demand. It is the first episode of House to Home, and we are one person short because our dear friend uh, Liz Duenas is en route. She's traveling right now because she spent the holidays, as you know, uh, with friends and family. So that means it's just Gina and I. So Gina, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. And she's actually here in spirit. I could hear her voice in the back of my ear right now. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's, it's, a very, it's a very welcome voice, uh, certainly. And next week we'll have her... Um, uh, visually as well as as audibly, but you know, um, of course, you are a first rate business person. Um, I know, you know, you're always like like a good chess, like any good chess player, you're always looking like two or three steps ahead. So I'm sure you've had 2023 mapped out as far as what you want to work on, what you need fine tuning in, and hopefully um, some projects you want to kick off long before you know December 31st. So what are you working on this year? You, you know, so our Monopoly board. This is where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we left off. We left off some issues last year, and I I know we we've been you know beating the drum about this issue, but we continue this saga with EPA and with Senator Perez. And I don't know if Senator Perez is going to be the person that we work with this year, but uh, John Duenas emailed her recently. You know, the election's over, and we just kind of wanted to remind her that this issue hasn't gone away. Uh, and, and we're not done with it until we get the type four septic tank facilities approved for Guam so that EPA does not continue to deny building permits for families that are looking at building their homes uh, over the aquifer area. Then that's something that we have to hit the ground running and, and addressing January, February. We're really hoping that the legislature, you know, once the drama about the speakership is over and they get the people set up for the committees. We want to reach out to whoever's assigned for that particular committee who has oversight over EPA. And we want to move that issue forward. I know John Duane has spent a lot of time working on the bill. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is really dear to us because until we know that these families can start building again and get their permits approved, it is something that we're going to continue pushing forward. And we also need to reach out to Lieutenant um, Josh to Norio to remind him that we left off that very important, um, you know, conversation with him as well. We have not gotten feedback from his attorneys, so we're going to keep pushing forward on that. And then the other thing that that we want to remind everybody, you, you know, th this is something that's dear to us as well. We we understand there's a lot of people with the interest rates going up. We have to become really smart about what we do in order to buy. If, if you're looking at buying or if you're looking at building for yourself, 2023 is going to be all about strategy and all about you have to be able to predict what's coming up. And I'll, I'll give you an example. 
if you're building and the interest rates, let's say you got approved last year to build. If you're in the process of building or you're getting ready to build, what you what the interest rate that you were approved based on last year has gone up, if not double, it will be double by the time you break ground. So you have to strategize. At this point, I would say stop, sit down with your loan officer and strategize, hey, what am I able to do considering the interest rates might hit eight or 9%? Mm -hmm. And you got to adjust and forecast for that. You know, it's almost like running a business. We do that all the time. It is. We have I mean, you're facilitating yeah. a transaction and you're, and you're dealing with usually large sums of money. You know, to me, hundred. if you're... If you're budgeting a hundred thousand a build or two hundred thousand, I mean that's a large sum of money as well. Mm -hmm. and when the interest rate doubles, it means that amount that you can use to build has gone down, if not fifty percent, but dramatically has gone down. The amount you can pull from the bank has gone down. So you really got to plan for that. Um, and 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 I would just say it's really difficult to know right now what two thousand and twenty three is going to bring from the state side over to Guam. I, I still believe that for Guam's market, it's still going to be very strong. We're still going to have demand, but it may not be as high as it was before with uh, VA buyers in the market. I think that demand's going to taper down a little bit. But let's face it, there are two things that don't go away. You always will need a place to live and you always need food, right? So those two things really kind of, they either go, they go up and then they stabilize, they go up and they stabilize but it's not going to go away. You still need a place to live. Mm -hmm. And so that market is not going to go down. And especially with the increased number of military coming to Guam. Well, interesting. Okay. So, uh, so Madam, Madam Chair, I'm, I am keeping the minutes here. So I, I am this, I am the uh, ad hoc secretary for, um, uh, for Gina and Liz Corp, right? So I'm uh, going over to, so that was an uh, old business, right? What have we got on the agenda for, for new business, new ventures, new opportunities that you may be looking to create or, you know, exploit Ex and exploit's not a bad word you, you know new business keep in mind that we we started the the children's arc last year yes so we're going to continue to work on projects for that we're we're going to brainstorm on what we could do to generate funding and the children's art network you know what we had in mind was was being able to make a real impact for individual families not just you know we wanted to personalize the help so that it makes a big impact. Okay, we wanted to make a difference, but we are also thinking, you know, in our line of work in real estate, we have to start projecting how can we make housing a possibility for low-income families through the children's arc. And that's, you know, that's always been really dear to us. We either focus on housing or we focus on infrastructure, but we want to hit the ground running this year to make a difference that way because we, we, we know local families here, if you're, you know, if you're not subsidized in any way and you're just a working class family like, like we are, like you are, like I am, Jace, like Liz is, then it gets more and more.